Hello everyone, this is Wags from Eagle Dynamics, and this is episode 6 of our DCS F-18C Hornet academic series. In this video, we're going to take a look at how you land a Hornet on an airfield in Visual Flight Rules Conditions, or VFR. Now, as you may have noticed, we've changed our location for these videos to the Persian Gulf map, and we'll be landing in Al Dafra Air Base in the UAE. So learning the mechanics of a VFR landing in an airfield is going to be very useful for later on when we move on to case one and case two recoveries on an aircraft carrier, given that many of the mechanics are the same. Unlike the past two videos, which are very technical in nature, this video is going to be much more instruction on a skill set, which with practice will get easier and easier over time. So here in the cockpit now, the first thing I want to do is set the autopilot to barometric hold as I get things set up. Now on the right DDI, I'll set it to the FCS page. I'll set the HUD to show radar altitude. And on the left DDI, I'll place the HSI, uh, set TACAN. And going to the UFC, I'm going to select TACAN again. Select transmit receive. Turn it on. Clear it, put you in uh, 96, which is Aldafra, tack in, and enter. And at this point, I'll change my scale and I'll set my landing course to 130 degrees. And with that done, I'll select waypoint one, select sequence one to show it. And change my scale and set the left DDI back to the HUD page and going down I'll put anti-skid on and I got the uh, tack end signal going on so I'll go ahead and quiet that up and getting a little warm so I'm going to adjust the vents a little bit and when in the landing pattern you'll probably find it easier to cage the HUD so I'll do that now as you can see, it's pretty uh, desolate out here south of Aldafra and Abu Dhabi. And you can see Aldafra over there off the left canopy bow. And further on is Abu Dhabi and the Persian Gulf. And at this point, I'll disengage the autopilot and head down about 5 degrees and establish an airspeed about 375 knots. And once a uh, beam of the airfield, I'll go ahead and turn in and establish the initial uh, upwind leg. And what I'll be looking to do is uh, establish an upwind leg at about 350 knots at 800 feet. Now, on this leg, it's important to offset yourself uh, from the runway, uh, not flying directly over it. Uh, that way, it'll allow you to check for any aircraft taking off or landing. You'll also notice on the HUD that we have the arrow, which indicates our course line for a reciprocal heading. Now, once at the end of the runway, we'll go ahead and break into the pattern with a 180 degree turn to the left. And what we're going to do is we're going to put G on their aircraft as 1% of the airspeed. So if we're braking at 350 knots, we're going to initially have a G of 3.5. And this will generally line us up about 1.2 to 1.3 nautical miles of beam of the runway on the downwind leg. Okay, and into the brake. And we're going to be modulating our stick pull uh, to put G on the aircraft to roughly match the airspeed. And it doesn't have to be precise, just try to be in the ballpark. And we're going to roll out to about uh, 130 degrees, which is our reciprocal heading. And if we're for below 250 knots, we'll go ahead at that point and we will drop the gear. And flaps down to full. 
So we're now on the uh, downwind leg, and we want to establish an altitude of roughly 600 feet radar, and we want to fly uh, on-speed AOA at 8.1 degrees. And this is best illustrated by the E-bracket on the HUD. By flying the vertical velocity vector within the E-bracket, that will put us on about an 8.1 degree angle of attack. And we want to have the velocity vector about on the horizon when we get 600 feet and keep the AOA at about 8.1 degrees. And you'll also notice on the left side of the HUD is the angle attack indexer lights, which is flashing uh, because we have the switch to carrier right now. But this will also give you an indication of whether you're uh, on the correct angle attack or if you're below or above it. Now to fly the on-speed AOA, it's really about good throttle control. Um, you really want to have a good throttle with good precision range if you can. Once the left wing has passed the runway threshold, we'll go ahead and initiate a 30 degree bank into the final turn. Now when we do this, what we want to try to do is keep the velocity vector just below the horizon line on the HUD by keeping the vertical line and the right horizontal line just touching it, while at the same time flying to keep the velocity vector inside the E-bracket using your throttle. Now at least for me, this has probably proved the most challenging part needing practice of maintaining the on-speed AOA at a constant 30 degree bank angle. As I start to roll out on a final here, I'm adjusting my bank angle a bit to have proper alignment. In fact, I should have maintained the 30 degrees and not let it go lower as it looks like I've probably come wide a little bit. And once I have the velocity vector near the runway, I'll go ahead and uh, cage it. And this now gives me a more accurate representation of the velocity vector. And at this point now, I'm uh, placing the velocity vector on where I want to land and using my throttle to adjust the angle of attack. Again, keeping a uh, constant uh, 8.1 degrees AOA. And as we're coming in, we're going to just keep holding that AOA and we will not flare or aero brake or anything when we land on the runway. And being a uh, carrier aircraft, you can have a vertical velocity descent of upwards of 750 uh, feet per minute. And we are down. And as you can see, it's almost like a control crash into the runway, just like you'll do when landing on the carrier. And we'll go ahead and roll out, and when we slow down a bit, we'll engage the nose wheel steering. So that's an overview of a VFR airfield landing. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, and again, a lot of this will be very applicable to when we get to carrier landings later on. Thanks.